Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me today to Acts chapter 8. And Saul approved of his execution, and there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him, but Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Those who were scattered went out about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ, and the crowd so with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. But there's a man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Even in Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them to them, Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone in whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are all in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. So Philip's in the city, and God is moving and working, and when God is working and moving, people notice and people see. And so there's this guy named Simon, who's got some kind of background. He says magician, some kind of sorcery. Uh, he's captivated the people over the years. Um, position, prominence, power finances and yet it says he believed right and so he's following after Philip just watching and taking it all in and then Peter and John come from Jerusalem kind of like as emissaries you know saying hey this is a real work of God here and we're going to pray that you would receive the Holy Spirit which is an interesting kind of thought because some would say hey you get all the spirit that you get at salvation well we already have seen earlier here in these verses that they believed in Jesus and the good news and it's changed their lives so they're already Christians and so now there's another work of the Holy Spirit that's happening this anointing this baptizing whatever you want to call it uh, Peter and John specifically came that they might receive the Holy Spirit and when Simon sees that he thinks yeah I want that power also he doesn't recognize and realize that uh, Christ in him the hope of glory that the Spirit can come upon him and he could walk in closeness with God and do miracles and do these things as God would allow that for to happen, but he sees the power and he thinks, again, prominence and position and money, and uh, he offers money. And Peter is like, hey, your heart's so far from God. You can't buy the Spirit of God. You can't uh, manufacture it. This isn't for sale, and you're going down the wrong path. And he says, hey, pray for me. You know, none of these things would happen. We don't know if he just doesn't want any of the bad things to happen or if he's actually repentant, but it's an interesting thing. When God is at work, people are stirred up for good and see good things happen. Others get stirred up for potential of what could be and maybe what might be for them. And so you kind of have to wade through and see, okay, God, what are you doing in hearts and lives? that's long-term 
and genuine and not of the flesh. It's not something bought or manufactured. It's just your spirit at work in hearts and minds. And so Peter and John then leave. They're preaching all the way back to Jerusalem. And so our thought today then is that, just that. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Ask that you might receive it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to earn it. You just, just like salvation, it's a free gift. Just, God, whatever you have for me, I want all of you. Uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit today. Till next time. I don't know about that.